We are not worried that we're gonna be beaten. It's it's just a League of Legends. So if you make mistake, if you had if you have bad early game, then if they snowball good, if they don't make any mistake, then we cannot do anything. But in other hand, it means like if enemy play really good, it means like we're learning something. So we're not afraid of losing, but we're just afraid of like having bad game. We make less mistakes than any other teams, and then we are good at snowballing. So like we're pretty confident against H2K. Welcome back to the European League Championship Series and H2K are about to take to the rift against the undefeated Fnatic and joining me to break down the matchup is uh, Rakat Yamato Cannon and the coach for Origin of course. I got a little confused because you of course used to work with Rakat as well. First off, congratulations, a fantastic victory. Thank you. Pretty straightforward versus Giants. Yes. Yeah, it was. Well, we're going to take a look at this matchup at the starting lineup starting with H2K on the blue side. Oduwamne, Lulex, Ryu, Uyarn, Kasing and Prali. Asset looking to uh, deal Fnatic, their very first loss of the season. And on Fnatic, it is, of course, Huni, then Rainover, Febivin, Reckless, Yellowstar, and Daylor. So two weeks ago, when H2K and Fnatic met, it was very, very convincing for uh, Fnatic because they really shut down Oduwamne. How do you think these teams have evolved since then? I feel personally, like, at this level of play, when you have two very like consistent teams, I think it, like the first initial mistake is what going to snowball the game towards one direction because usually like the game should finish after one mistake, like theoretically, but unless there's more mistakes involved in the game, and it was pretty clean. What do you think? Um, I definitely think that both teams evolved a lot since then. Personally, I think H2K is actually weaker. Uh, since that match, I personally think that they are in some sort of a slump, like their play lately hasn't impressed me, where I think uh, Fnatic actually is actually improving, still at a very strong rate. And yeah, I personally think that, <laughs> yeah, I think Fnatic definitely has the edge. It's interesting because Fnatic did get pushed around in some games versus Giants. That was a tough game versus Gambit. Gambit actually built up a lead versus them. Why do you think that is if you think of Fnatic's mindset? Uh, it's partly maybe because of the scouting, because of the draft. I think the Ezreal, like the first game against Giants, I think would have been a much more convincing win. The second game, on the other hand, I I don't know, like uh, the Ezreal, I think caught, caught them a little bit too off guard. Uh, with a strong pick and ban phase, I actually have no doubt in mind that Fnatic will play a very clean and controlled game. Mm. Okay, so definitely Fnatic here, the favorite for you guys. Uh, you say H2K has been looking a bit weaker. One person that's been doing really good on that team, though, is Hjarnan, and we'd love to take a look at the AD carries for both teams, Hjarnan versus Reckless. We took a look at the stats, and when it comes to damage share, Hjarnan actually does 29% of the damage to champions in his team, which is the highest of AD carries. Reckless, on the other hand, only does 25%, which is the second lowest of AD carries. But on the other hand, if you look at their gold share, meaning the amount of gold that comes into the team that ends up in their hands, Yarnan is the third highest of 80 carries and Reckless is the lowest of 80 carries, meaning he gets less gold, but he is very good with it. And I know we were talking about the strength of these 80 carries, and you said, to me, these stats don't mean a lot because I got my eye on Niels when it comes to best 80 carries in Europe. It's like, personally, uh, when, I, when I said best the bot lane in Europe, I meant specifically the lane phase. I think, when I think of the Fnatic bot lane, I think they are smart during the game, but their lane phase is not really something where they create a lot of advantages. While we see Kassing and, uh, of course, Yarnan, they create advantages for themselves. While I, while, while I feel that uh, the Mithy and Nils combo creates the, the best advantage for themselves throughout the lane phase. Proud coach here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me what, uh, what you thought about the triple threat com that was in H2K. Actually, Yarnan seems to be taking uh, a really big role in that. Um, that might be the case, but I think also that uh, H2K's playstyle, they might uh, differ a little bit. If we look at champion pools that might come into uh, the play today, I think we can see more tank utility, like I especially have my eye on Nautilus and Lulu for both top laners. Uh, if the Ryze ends up going through, which I don't think it will, then we might see again the th triple threat coming in. But actually, I think that both H2K and Fnatic might be making a transition, going towards more of the tank and utility side in the top lane. Mm. Well, we'll find out in just a few seconds, actually, because the teams are ready on stage and we're going to head over to the casters for this top of the table clash. Welcome back. Thank you very much, Analyst Desk. If we were allowed two games of the week, this would be your second one. It's H2K versus Fnatic. Picks and bands, what are we expecting? What are we expecting? I mean, uh, Ludoc was just talking about how Nautilus top lane, we've seen Lula a few times for, for Huni. Ob obviously, Fnatic playing around with some different compositions. We saw Protected Reckless last week. It worked out. 
in the Eventually. end, in the end of the game, it worked out for them. But Fnatic is a team that likes to target ban quite a lot. They play all the standard meta picks, but H2K should be able to do the same. Should be able to. They've taken Olaf away from Rainover. If you remember back to a couple weeks ago, Rainover stole Dragon with an undertow, and then you ban it. And I mean, now no it's banned. Last week, however, Rainover played Rek'Sai. Yeah, this over is the, the Olaf. Rainover is the only jungler in Europe that has managed to make a third tier one jungle pick for himself in that Olaf here. He picked it so many times when Rek'Sai was open, when Gragas was open, because he trusted in his team that they could snowball the early to mid game. And when Olaf obviously hits that late game, he becomes such a monster. And Rainover would just be this single threat very often in terms of diving the enemy AD carry. So uh, we have to see. I expect just Rek'Sai Gragas for him instead. I mean, I don't think he's going to mind too much. There's no way to ban out Fnatic if you look at all of the threats across multiple roles. Last time these teams met, I feel Fnatic somewhat baited Oduwamne into playing the Rumble. He was performing exceptional up until Fnatic completely shut it down. Rumble is the most banned champion against Fnatic. Nine out of their previous 12 games. Okay, Gragas. And we'll see whether or not Fnatic want to consider it. Gragas up, Echo up, Rumble up. Yeah, so Alistair up, with Sivir these, up. With these two AD carry, oh, sorry, jungle bans from H2K, and now it's, especially with Sivir being banned away, you would normally just say, okay, Gragas should be the first pick, then they're setting up for it, the last one of their tier one junglers available. Fnatic had the choice. Do we want to leave Sivir open and try and say, hey, whichever you don't take of Gragas, Sivir, we pick it up on our side? But also, we have seen new junglers come in, and we, we talked about Echo Jungle earlier being very strong among some of the teams here in Europe, at least, we've seen Evelyn quite a few times. There's a fairly large pool of, jung of junglers, but Gragas will stand out now with these two bands. If Gragas is first picked for H2K, the only other jungler that Rainover has played is Evelyn, and he did it once. One thing that we briefly, briefly entertained last week was if there is anybody on Fnatic who you, if you squeezed, how do they perform? It was Rainover. Yeah. He had one. It has to be okay Gragas' first game. pick. It has to be Gragas. I mean, yeah, there we go. It is locked in. When you ban two junglers, if you didn't take the Gragas here, those two uh, two bans wouldn't make any sense at all for H2K. Also, with Fnatic banning with Sivir, um, I wonder if H2K were trying maybe to bait them to leave it open so they could first pick and say, okay, you get the Gragas instead. But for now, Fnatic has been happy banning out purely the bottling. We've seen this before. Last time they played H2K, they banned Kasing. All three bans were to Kasing or towards him. He locked in an Annie instead and, and didn't really have much of an impact on the game. Now, Echo is open. We've seen it as flex pick. Oh, it should be a flex pick for Fnatic. Overall, just like Alistar would be one of the go-to picks, but we also know Fnatic likes to change up what they play in, and it's very difficult to predict. It really is. However, we touched on Rumble. We touched on how many times it's been banned. You have to anticipate H2K are aware of this. Yeah. Because we were. Corky, the next top tier AD carry. We've seen two graves today. What does Hyana want to run now that. Oh, he's run Jinx multiple Jinx. times yeah. as well. Whenever H2K is in a situation where Kalista Sivir is banned, they like to go towards the Jinx and run these protect the Jinx compositions. So, like Janna, Gragas as disengage for them, but you need to be careful running too much disengage against a poke comp, which Fnatic is already b slightly building towards. We know Jace is going to be a contested pick between Ryu and Febivan, and with the AP top lane and with the Corky, it's perfect for Fnatic to lock in a Jace. H2K might look to take it away from them instead, but then if you run this protect the AD carry composition with the Jinx, you might really rely heavily on physical damage, which can, be which can become another problem for you seconds left in this next round. H2K, where will they go? Shen support. Shen and Na. Earlier today, we talked about how I believe it's North America have run Shen a couple times in the support role with the Shadow Dash taunts into flashes with Kasing losing access to Thresh, even though Jan is available. I just want to throw it out there. Kickers also ran Na in the jungle. I'm not expecting it because of how good Oda won. There's is a Gragas too. I'm just saying, just saying. All right. Shen we've support. Seen, we've seen Gragas top as well. Yeah, true. <laughs> I'm going to say it's Shen support coming in for Kasing. It can work as well in terms of protecting. Is this not a protect the Jinx? If you this put like a Lulu mid and then Jinx? I mean, yeah, sure. If you if you add in a Lulu mid as well. Shen, though, for me, is a support that really shines at setting up plays across the map, obviously, uh, as a global with his ulti. So to, to me, it looks more like we want to make sure Odo Amna can have a fantastic strong game on this Gnar. He can become a one-on-one -on -one threat with like Black Cleaver, and then 
once you start pushing down the waves, the Shen can TP in and you can start tower diving and yeah, I saw it. We're going back, way back, to when nobody really expected Fnatic to be good. At the beginning of the spring split, it was the rengar Zerath combo, if memory serves. It was. And it was comboed with Lissandra top. Back when I thought Fnatic had a limited champion pool. And Rainover, he really showed up. But we've not seen Rengar work particularly well in summer. Shook ran it once. I wasn't blown away. But this no. also this also means if you run Jinx, that's that's a easy to get to champion. The problem for Rengar right now is like he's he's fairly predictable in, in how he wants to play teams have really learned how to deep ward against him. At the same time, he's obviously an all-in champion. Once you go in, you're not going to get out. I mean, you're going to go in, you're going to try and blow up this one target or lock down the target for the rest of, you, for the rest of your team. So there's not a whole lot of uh, a comeback in short if you are a ring guy and you start falling behind. It's okay though, after locking in that support, Shen decided to say we don't want to run this complete protect the Jinx composition. Instead, very safe picks for them. Victor is one of the better blind picks in the mid lane because he has very few bad matchups. Lucian as well in the bottom lane can handle himself, has a dash versus this Rengar. So for me, honestly, this comp for H2K is so much about what Odo Amne can do in this Gnar. If he becomes a split pushing threat, we know Gnar does well into Rumble. You can build early Hexstringer, you can even go for Black Cleaver and Rumble will do nothing to you in the one-on-one -on -one lane. Also felt difficult for Rumble to set up the gank properly against the Nor. Then suddenly H2K has a split pushing threat in Odo Amna. They have wave clear on the Lucian on the Victor. And you can play around that really effectively. And then all you have to worry about is this Rengar pick in terms of creating picks for Fnatic. Something they love to do. I wonder if they want to go Jace though and pair it up with this Corky for this massive mid game spike. And it looks like it will be that. I mean that was where Febivin earned the title of European Sniper when he was comboing his Zerath with some of the pick power that Raynova had provided. A little bit more aim required on a Jace but than a Zerath. What is a Rengar doing in, in, in a poke comp, in a siege comp? I really want to see how Raynova is going to play this one out. Everything else for Fnatic makes perfect sense. You have fantastic mid-game power spike in Jace and the Corky together, and the Rumble obviously for teamfights. Rumble also works really well in these comps here where people have to engage on you. You land down that ulti, and it makes it very, very difficult for H2K to then engage in. But the Rengar itself is going to be probably more about tower diving with Yellowstar, honestly. Yellowstar going in first, then Rengar follow, lock down that one target, and you just blow it up. We have seen how Fnatic can coordinate a snare, some CC with like the, the shock blast from the Jace you just talked about it a few times, and that's been very effective in the past. I just want to see how Raynova is going to play this one out because fairly standard for H2K, except for obviously Shen support. And the one thing I do like from both teams, they have a good mixture of damage from physical to AD to wave clear. We see the option to play multiple ways on sure. both teams' team compositions, and that's something yeah. that is somewhat lacking across the lower table teams. Only thing maybe for H2K is like, there's no clear cut hard engage. You're going to have to like taunt flash on the Shen maybe. You're going to have to gnar flank in. So it's so much going to be about can Odo Amna be a split pushing threat? Can defeat him early game with the Shen as well? TPing in and helping him. If anybody can, it might be Odo Amna's gnar. You can see the sign in the crowd. 18 and 0, the dream. H2K want to stop Fnatic short. They couldn't do it last time. We're loading onto the rift for their second attempt here in summer. Fnatic looking to equal the longest regular season winning streak of 13 wins undefeated, set by Cloud9. It feels like a long time yeah. ago. Definitely not the same team we see today. That's for sure. And H2K obviously looking to, to upset Fnatic, be the first team to shut them down. Let's see what happens here. Rainover and Yellowstar sneaking down. They might just want to invade in near this tri bush and just move around the corner with it. But nobody's waiting. The H2K has just put a ward and said, okay, we're not going to stand and wait here. They're moving in now. Oh, I was really hoping for, that they would sit around for the level one face check. Tri bush ward from H2K. Is there not at risk? We'll spot all of Fnatic. How do H2K respond? Remember H2K was just waiting in a bush. Fnatic doesn't know where they are. They might walk straight into them. Let's see how many members are around. Only Yanan and then Ryu on the other side. We might see a collapse on Rainover. Look at him. 
He's taunted. Rainover's in trouble. He gives up first blood to Oduwamna's Nar. Might not be over yet. Huni's trying to escape. Kasing saving up the energy. Yellow starts put a point into Pulverize. Lulex has flashed over the wall. Yellow Taunt, starts in trouble. Taunt not going to be needed or used. Two to zero. H2K's ward works out beautifully. And Fnatic with the very greedy invade. They had zero information on where H2K were hiding their members or if they were even hiding in that jungle and just walked in there, split up even. Raynover took his own route around and just easy pick up for H2K. Shen is such a fantastic pick at level one with his taunt. Perfect start. And I mean, Odo Amna, can you ask for a better start? The man that was completely ruled out of the game the last time H2K was uh, played against Fnatic is now literally gifted two kills. A great ward and a great interception of Fnatic means Odo Amna is now starting with a Ruby Crystal and that Crystalline Flask. You can see the stats down at the bottom. Fnatic completely outplayed H2K in that game. Yeah. Now they've got hard mode. They played from behind against Giants last week. Fnatic have to do it again this week. And Odo Amna also gets a standard lane, which is so important for him in terms of getting towards Hextring, get towards the Black Cleaver, become this massive split pushing threat that Fnatic will have so few answers to. It's going to be something like Rain over trying to come in with a gank and like trying 2v1 shut down the NAR. But if H2K is playing the map correctly, you're going to have like a Shen teleporting in and quickly it's a 2v2. Shen shuts down so many of these aggressive plays you can make. And he's just so good at reacting on the fly. Very often when you play with a Rengar, it's about pre-planning your plays. You need to time the minion waves correctly so you can either go in for the counter gank or you know you can gank safely and not get counter ganked by the Grog. So that's going to be the key as well. We talked about this in champ select. Rengar is an all-in champion. Once you're going in for that gank, you're not getting out. So if Gragas is waiting there to counter gank you, well, you're gonna die. All of HCK were waiting to counter gank Fnatic and they made it count. Two kills on the board. With Yellow Star's death, that's only the second time this split. Yellow Star's been killed before 10 minutes. Let that sink in for a second. 13 games, and that's only the second time before 10 minutes. There's a massive minion wave built up between Hyana and Kasing. Kasing Shen's gonna throw out some of those Vorpal Blades. Not gonna offer a whole lot more harass than that. As Yellowstar and Reckless are doing a pretty good job of farming underneath the tower. And just also good scouting from H2K. In that level one, we saw they placed the ward in the tri-bush and then they moved and they all stayed around the bot side jungle. They didn't just start invading into Fnatic's jungle or anything, you know, they waited. They saw Fnatic on that ward, he said, okay, perfect. They're walking into the trap. Kept it cool, waited for the Face check, basically, and then they pulled it and they got the two kills. So very, very smart start for H2K. And, and we have seen Fnatic very often go for these early uh, invades. And what it does mean is Oduwamne up in that top lane has got the makings of that phage very early on. He doesn't have a big advantage over Huni for the time being. Oh, except two kills. Two kills, of course. And of course, there's your knock. Four games, 12 KDA. Rumble, he's been allowed it once, banned out nine times. Obviously, a few times it has played, it's been phenomenal. 4-1-7 and seven was the last stat that uh, Huni picked up, and he's going to have to have another phenomenal performance to bounce back against this already fed No. And H2K knows there's not a whole lot of pressure from a 3-6 Rengar, so they can safely sit and push up the lanes. We saw the bottom lane, how they were playing aggressive from the start. Top lane as well, Odo is always looking to try and trade with Huni. If Huni uses his harpoon on lasting a minion, Odo Amni is going to just instantly start trading back with him and win out because again, he knows Rainover is not really going to be able to do a whole lot early on. And now it's going to be about can H2K keep tracking the Rengar in the jungle? Because standard lane-wise, just one-on-one or 2v2 -on -one or lane, H2K is going to be more than fine all throughout the early to mid game. They don't need to worry about those lanes. All they have to worry about is can the Rengar pull off some ganks? So Lulex, his job is tracking Rainover over and over. He's already spotted him now, you see here on the map. And he now knows, okay, he's level five. And then you start timing it, okay, how many camps does he need? And you start waiting for that potential level six. Fevervin goes to the skies, puts the hammer down on Ryu, knocks him back. Rainover was hanging about there in the middle lane, but does not have access to the thrill of the hunt. You see that taunt not connecting just yet. Rainover looking for an opportunity. He's pushing the out the way for uh, for Febrin, so you can go back. He's out of mana. You want to back fairly early on the chase to get your tier anyway. So call in your jungler. Tell him no taxes, of course. <laughs> and just push out the wave and look at you get all the fun. Of course, for Rainover, 
the first time we've seen him on Rengar this split, but it's not the first time we've seen him this year. He's actually played five games in spring. Four wins, one loss to Fischo. And interestingly, it was a loss to the Copenhagen Wolf. Look at Lulex up top. Look, look at the setup here. The mini wave is pushing down to Odo Anders. So Huni cannot farm because there's the risk of Lulex waiting around. So he's reading the situation correctly, but he will always lose a little bit. Odo Omni can just block this next minion if he wants to. He's just going to give it all in the very end to Huni. But uh, smart play from both top laners. One is trying to bait it. The other one is reading a situation saying there's a high chance of the Darn being Lulex even using his sweeper, being like, is there a ward here? What's going on? Oduwamne does not get any Oscars or Emmys this time around. Huni playing it safe. He is down 8 CS. The minion wave pushing into him, and we've seen that Oduwamne's back. Hex Drinker already completed. Double Ruby Crystals secured. Rainover now has access to Thrill the Hunt. He also has those Moby Boots picked up. So H2K may get a Kitty Cat surprise if Rainover can find the correct opportunity. And with the top wave resetting, I think, going to push towards Odo Omni, that opportunity is not going to be there for a long time. For a while, I think I'll use that term instead. Yeah. Again, you always have to respect where Lulix can be on the map. He's obviously going to get his own level 6. And as we mentioned before, it's about tracking this Rengar. Look at his early side stone for him. Didn't upgrade his... Uh, Enchant. Instead, Rainover, he's going for Odo Amne now. Gonna look for the hop. Odo Amne knows, gets rooted in place. Equalizer's burning Odo Amne. The follow-up bowler. Shannon's coming. Ignite. It's coming out from Kasing. He has an Ignite. That's a two-man taunt. Flash away from Rainover. H2K, I've got three kills. Kasing and Odo Amne want more. Mega Nars about to come out. Odo Amne needs one more auto attack. He's saving it. The taunt connects. Mega Nars gonna pop. Huni's in trouble. He gets Narbard against the wall. 4-0 H2K! We talked about this. Support Shen is so good at shutting down these aggressive plays here. H2K, they know there's not a single lane that's gonna lose on its own. It's all about Rainover. And with these early kills focusing, the fact he had a great laning phase, didn't have to go back or anything, he got level 6 instantly. Turns the gang around top lane. Fnatic really in massive problems. They used so many cooldowns for this one. Rengar ulti, double flashes. And Shen support says, hello, my top laner is not gonna die today. Last time Odomna was completely shut down. This time, two kills, two assists. And then you can just spend all your money on Ruby Crystals. Fantastic performance in the early game for H2K. Great response play. Anticipating some of the focus that uh, Oduwamne may be getting. Actually, anticipating that duo of Rainover and Huni. Yeah. You know they're going to hold hands. You know they're going to look for kills. And I just want to go back to playoffs in the spring split. H2K played Fnatic as well in the semi-final. H2K pulled out Shen top for Oduwamne two games in a row. It was supposed to be one of the counters to Fnatic's playstyle there. How they were always looking for picks, looking for teleport plays, and they could counter that with a global. Managed to win one of the games, also thanks to Huni playing Lee Sin top with Sin the whole game was completely useless, but uh... So Fischer, we did see an equalizer coming out from Huni, but Fnatic were aware something fishy was up. Deep wards in the top half of the jungle and H2K hammering away on that top tower. Let's just talk more about Shen. I love Shen's support. It, I, think, <laughs> I think it's so, so strong in the mid game, because he excels so much in the current meta in terms of setting up tower dives, or obviously defending for, for, for ganks. Because what you can do now is, if Rainover takes over, sorry, if Nar takes over the lane, he can push down the rumble. You can so easily coordinate a dive where the Shin just TPs in on Odo Amne, taunts Huni, and that's it. That's a kill for, for H2K. That's the support doing it. He has great base stats with some of the buffs he's been getting lately, so he's fairly strong, just as an individual champion as well in the early game. Obviously late, his main job is going to be like, can you flash taunt the AD carry? That's why he starts falling off a little bit. But just the global pressure he offers as a support is so insane in the mid game. And again, knowing the focus that Oduwamne may be the target, Oduwamne is undefeated in this Nar this split, four and zero. Has been one of the most impressive DPS focused Nars that we've seen. Both ultis ready again for Kasing and Rainover. And Rainover is fully spotted in the jungle. Mentioned it with the D boards needed for H2K. All they have to do is just track rain over over and over. Early side stone. Don't have to operate your jungle item yet if you are Lulex. He's one of these very supportive junglers. It's the style he really likes to play. 
And now we really have to see what Fnatic can do. So to Fisher and pick some bands, you said if there's deep vision, Rainover's Rengar is going to get read like a book. It's exactly what H2K are doing. What we've also seen from H2K is standard lanes. They've been struggling in lane swaps in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, we jinxed them. And in this lane setup, it's working out. Reckless is caught out. Kasing does not have flash. That may have cost Reckless his life, but he's going to at least Valkyrie away. Not sure what it is, Trevor, but last split, we had a Telestrator segment on why H2K was so good. I believe it was on like on 5.4 and they were like, yep, best I, team I in Europe. that because I'm going to carry the guilt of this. And then completely slumped for like a few weeks in the Cinderhawk meta and just couldn't figure out how to play. Then we have a Telestrator segment on how they're the best team at lane swapping. They play Fnatic, they lose the lane swap, and the next few weeks they fall behind in every single lane swap. Now we're back to normal though. So what you're trying to say is Caster Curse is real. And it's against H2K. You're trying to, you're trying to say it's our fault? I think it's a telestrator. The tele it, there we go. It's a cursed I think, telestrator. I think that's the problem. The weatherman screen, ladies and gentlemen. We do see Dragon has been started by H2K. 12 and a half minutes. Rain over. Has got Smite. However, not going to be in range. And there we go. We do see H2K. Dragon number one. Holding on 2,000 gold. Beat. They've got a tower in the middle lane down already. Just also um, looking at this Lucian pick for Yannan. I mean, he was so vocal about how strong Jinx was when some of these other AD carries were banned away. We'll talk about it after, because right now, for now, Rainover is looking for a potential tower. Like, this is where Alistar is getting super strong. He's going in. Here's the tower dive. They're focusing the global. Kasing's in trouble. Tower has fallen. Teleport's coming in from Huni on the back. Equalizer's not going to do a whole lot, but Rainover's flashed. Reply flash from Kasing. And Fnatic don't get the kills. The European Sniper misses a shot. The Fnatic do get a tower at the cost of top. Yeah, we'll trade towers here. This top lane tower would have gone down fairly soon anyway. So Fnatic instead trying to make a play. And when you face these globals, it's so difficult to make plays where they can join in. Go gank them instead. They won't be able to do anything using Alistar. And I think Raynover jumped into the tower. So barely got any damage off. But they got the bot lane. This uh, Lucian pick though, as I was just talking about before, Shen is one of these supports that needs an AD carry that can handle himself. Because you need to be able to teleport away and not have an AD carry just sit and die. Jinx wouldn't have been able to do that against Alistar, against a Rengar. So that's where Lucian comes in super handy for them. And also, you're expecting your lane to be ganked because, again, you are the global. Ganked the global. Lucian with his dash can be very safe in that case. So it's not going to be about Jan in this game here and damage he can deal. Well, they can't ignore him either, though. Take That's a true. quick look at the setup. 20 CS advantage for Odo Omne up top. 20 for Ryu in the mid lane, even for the AD carries. And this is some support on support action. Yellow Star's gonna headbutt Kasing away. Insane. Scariest fight of the game. But confident play from Kasing. The Kasing effect after joining H2K in week three, week four of Spring Split has really led H2K to be one of the best teams in Europe, and MCK now going to steal away this blue buff. Zero contest from Fnatic. Just full control. You even see how just by them invading into the jungle here, they force Reckless and Gilda away from the tower. Yeah, Fnatic are trying to go in again, and they pull something off. That's a flash pulverized! Kasing and Lulex kept out. Lulex is knocked back. He will go down to Rainover, who's now on the board. Fnatic with their first kill. Equalizer in the tri bush. Shock blast connects. Look at the mid lane here. H2K will force down to the bottom of the map, so mid lane is open. Fnatic are instantly going to push it. There was a team that could come back from giving up two kills at level one. It is Fnatic. Punishing H2K for that invade and blue steel. They get their first kill of the game. And they'll put a lot of damage on this tower, but I don't think they'll be able to kill it. There's an ulti from Yarnin to clear it out, but yeah, got a bit of damage on it. Rainover, knowing that his own jungle is completely warded, saying, okay, I'm gonna start just ganking from my lane. I know I can pop my ulti at this tier two tower and you won't spot it. And that's how he managed to get in, create a pick for himself. There's no TP for Odomin, so he couldn't join. And I didn't see where Rio was on the map, but a quick kill for Fnatic and some damage. This is what they need to do. I mean, again, Rainover has to be the guy setting up the fight together with Yellowstar over and over and over. And of course, the one thing that HTK will have a little bit of a difficulty is breaking through those inner turrets. There's a lot of wave clear from Fnatic. Jace and Corky do great. 
And if H2K group, you can see the power of a flash pulverized from Yellow Star. But here's the thing, though. If you look at the wave from Fnatic, Jace has to position himself on the side and like smack the shock blast, shock blast into the minion wave, meaning he's not going to hit H2K. That buys time for them to stay and keep the 4v4 because they want again. They want to split push with Odo Amne. Jumping him now. Hooney's already gone golden and he's got caught out. Hooney will be dropping, but not before he puts the equalizer out. Rainover has leaped back in with Thrill of the Hunt. Kasing is channeling the Stand United. Rainover is looking for a kill, but I don't think he'll find him. Kasing saves H2K once more. Look at the front lane as well. Solo by Oduwamne and Hyanin is pushing the bottom lane. Fnatic get a tower at the cost of three lives. Big. Mistake here from Fnatic. Huni, he popped his hourglass. Obviously a misclick from him. And also just the engage coming in. H2K were ready for it. Even though Yana wasn't there, they knew they could take some of the fight or they could trade even at least with Fnatic while he was taking the button. Let's see it again. So the take tower, look how H2K is already moving on the map and they can see Bevan in the mid lane. Misclick from Huni, meaning he's an easy target now to take down for H2K. Mega now coming, Photo Amner. Beautiful setup. And meanwhile, while you AD carry, you don't need him. You can clean up because Fibbin moving too late. This is not a standard Fnatic play. They're normally the ones already in position with all members at once. In the pre-game video, Rainover said that he feels Fnatic make less mistakes than their opponents. In the video we heard earlier today, Hooney was saying, even if H2K improve, we can still beat them. Fnatic are 4,000 gold down on the cusp of losing the longest regular season winning streak Europe has ever seen. If H2K can keep punishing Fnatic. Seven kills to one. You got the first dragon. It's not going to be about those for quite a while. But H2K straight back into the jungle of Fnatic. They've been spending more time in this jungle than I think Rainover has. And it's what you need to do when you face something like a Rengar. Obviously, the next thing is going to be deep wards in the lanes, which is not something we see very often. But if you look at the mid lane right here, just outside of the screen, you can see a ward place from H2K. That's again to spot. If Fnatic is ever grouping with this Jace and this Corky, you're going to see Reynova sit very far behind the team in the lane where he doesn't expect there to be a ward. And then that's why he pops his ult. You can see the ward on his screen now. It's cast of minions. And then he's going to jump in. And that's what H2K is trying to spot. Because again, if Rainova cannot get in there, <laughs> Fnatic doesn't have a lot of ways of getting to like Ryu, getting to Yarnin. Somebody from HTK that has a lot of ways to get to Fnatic is Kasing. Stand United almost available. He's got Home Guard, Moby Boots. H2K secure an inner turret in the bottom lane. That's fourth one of the game. Look at the top lane, however. Fnatic's minions are pushing towards HTK. There's no teleport for Moto on this. Somebody needs to go deal with that. Fnatic are not necessarily grouped up. Fnatic wants to just stop the recalls. They want to see if this minion wave here can do some damage and also get cleared out. Obviously, the minions going to the towers doesn't benefit H2K in any way. So Fnatic doing a very good job just stopping the recalls, trying to buy a bit more time. There's nothing else down here in the bottom of the map to really fight for because there's no dragon. The towers are gone as well. Now Huni needs to be careful. He's been taunted! Huni may have hourglass. He's going to have to. Equalizer comes out, saving their cooldown this time round. But Rainov has been caught out. A two-man knockup from Yellowstar. Look at the shock blast from Febivin. Shocking the audience, but no kills for Fnatic. So Fnatic tried to stop H2K from recalling and then just kept moving down. Kept trying to bait them potentially into a fight. And then we see this torn flash you can do on the Shen. Didn't manage to get a kill on Huni, but Reyno then jumps in and... You are this Rengar, there's only one, one way. I mean, you buy one ticket and you're never gonna get back out. This goes down. Two jungle bands and a Gragas post pick against Reyno. Working so far. Also go back to picks and bands. I think a lot of members of Fnatic have been squeezed. However, Reyno has not been squeezed as hard. Is this the way? Is it unlucky 13 for Fnatic? 21 minutes gone by, 5,000 gold up, two towers up, two dragons up. And we're in the territory where Fnatic can sneak barrels. True. However, they're very far down. Yeah. And it's normally Fnatic having the vision control at this point where they get these Baron sneaks. Another thing to highlight, we talk very quickly about how the mid-game spike 
Corky, Jace, Rumble is fantastic for Fnatic, but because they gave up two kills at level one and because they've been falling behind further and further, we have barely seen them group and land enough poke from this Jace, from this Corky. We haven't seen them get into proper fights yet. They might be able to get a pick on Lulex though. Lulex is in trouble. Explosive cast comes out. Equalizes down. Odo Wobble is back in Mega Nah. He's gonna look for a two-man knockout, but it's only Rain over in Yellow Star. Feathervin is firing down the shot blast on the side as Yarn has been zoned away thus far. Kissing lands a taunt. Look at Reckless. He's low on mana, but high on health. Landing auto attacks, flashing forward. The Gatling gun's out. He should find Odo Wobble for the shutdown. Oh, the nice. shot blast. It's Yarnit! Fnatic have four kills looking for the ace and there's a peel for Baron. I'm happy we just talk about how strong the mid game is for Fnatic, yet even though we didn't get to see them really use it so far, now they got a fight. Lulex got caught out. Kasing didn't manage to get in in time, so it was very uncoordinated for H2K. Suddenly, Fnatic, they do what they do best. They always manage to find ways to come back in the games. Fnatic punish mistakes fantastically well in the same way that H2K punished Fnatic. I do want to say the two times Fnatic have found kills and objectives has been punishing H2K's over eagerness on the invades. Okay, let's look and see what's going on here. So they jump onto Lulex, TP is coming. I mean, H2K have a lot of members around. It's just so much burst onto Lulex. And now, HK is split up. If you see outside your screen on the left, Yarnan is there, but Huni is zoning him away. Same can almost be said for Kasing. Meanwhile, Ryu was trying to come down here on the bottom. He goes down. The burst combo from the Jace. And similarly with HK being split up, it allowed Fnatic to finally get onto these carries. And, you know, as we talked about, they have a fantastic mid game. Rumble, Jace, Corky. You always have to respect the damage they can deal. I mean, February with the combo, just activating his W before changing into hammer form, the insane attack speed. Ryu just got smacked in the head. <laughs> we have a game on. Rain over stood on top of a ward. Kasing's gonna get the taunt. Here comes Odo Wamne. Hops forward. And Rain is just gonna go invisible. <laughs> oh, a great round of applause from the audience as we have a game on our hands. Fnatic had to play from behind against the Giants last week, and they're playing from behind against H2K this week. And it's going to be tricky for H2K to try and set up this Baron here, because when against a Corky and even a Jace, there's a lot of ways for Fnatic to like check these bushes here, despite not having any vision, to see if someone is hiding there for H2K. So you need like multiple layers of wards in the jungle to, to start baiting the Baron, because if you start the Baron, you're stuck in that pit. And a Jace lands a Shock Blast. One Shock Blast is enough to just force you away. Bot lane, Huni's pushing with TP. H2K just want to try and brute force this tower and see if they can get Huni to teleport off. It looks like they're going to be trading. Kasing has Flash available. H2K secure the tower first. Rumble not known for his uh, incredible tower killing speed. But teleport is up as well. So if Huni needs to respond, he can. H2K steal all of the jungle camps and place a metric ton of wards. They have zero pinks at the moment. Number one rule against the Rengar, pinks. Number two rule against any team in the world, pinks. Because <laughs> you need to also deny vision, otherwise you can't really move anywhere. And for now, H2K have accepted that they're just trading vision with Fnatic. You can see how there's a ward of Baron, there's a ward in the jungle for Fnatic as well. So dragon number three, Deficio. This might be a thing. Movement Five speed. Dragons. Movement speed increase for H2K. Fnatic will be running out of time if they do not pick a fight for the next few barons, uh, dragons. Need to clear out the vision. And. Shock Blast. I think that's where Kissing's HP went. Yellow still's looking for an engage. Fnatic are split, but they've got to wait for Megan on. Sweeting it out. Never disrespect the damage Fnatic can do at this point in the game. Yellow Star is torn it up. Let's see what Lulis can do. Equalizer comes out. That one's good. The Shock Blast doesn't connect. Fnatic have got the damage focus on Odo Wamne and Lulis. Odo Wamne will be going down. Feathervin's on a killing spree. Five versus four, and Fnatic cannot find more. Again, it's Fnatic going in. I'm not sure if I said never respect the damage or never disrespect the damage, but don't disrespect it because Fnatic's mid game is fantastic. 
Ryu is here, he's full HP, but Lewis is so low, he's going in! Kaling's coming over from the side, Red Team Baron! Fnatic get Baron! There's two more kills for Huni, it's a double, they're looking for Ryu! We see the Valkyrie available from Reckless, Shock Blast connects, Rainover doesn't connect with the Bowler Strike, nor does the Foss Bomb, and that Death Star laser hurts a lot! Ryu's gonna be able to get out, but Fnatic get the first Baron of the game, 26 minutes on the clock, and it's Fnatic with the gold lead. Fnatic had no answer to a split pushing NAR. They had so many more answers though to team fights. And H2K have now multiple times in a row engaged into fights with Fnatic or at least been in, in situations where Fnatic could force fights on them. And that's been exactly what they wanted with this Rumble pick, the Jace obviously from Fibivan. Yes, Fnatic doesn't get to sit there and land the poke, but they still have such a good all in in terms of the damage they can do. And H2K just haven't been using this great start for Omni. 4, 2, and 5 with the CS advantage. Moto Omni has been the man left for dead when those team fights have broken out. Let's also quickly give some praise to Feverman. Hitting the shock blasts when they count as these team fights are breaking out. Positioning from Reckless and near flawless as well. I've not really felt Reckless has been at threat of those flash taunts. It's something you were mentioning from Kasim. Thrill of the hunt. Where is the kitty cat going? The answer is nowhere. It's not the most impressive Rengar game from Rainover. He's gonna find Oda Wamne, Shark Blast, looking to control on his Baron empowered minions. Broken to Fischio. Culling comes out to clear the wave. Tower is going to survive for a few seconds longer. So it looks like Lulix wants to clear her out. That's a big chunk off of Ryu. Shock Blast coming out. Minions are conga lining in to Fischio. Fnatic are keeping up the siege. Yeah, finally, Fnatic gets to siege with the composition. We're still only 28 minutes in. There's like a lot more with the things going on. So they have fantastic poke at this point. And Overall, for, for H2K, we mentioned these pink wards before, and I really feel like that's been such a big problem for them. In, they've never really been able to deny a whole lot of vision away from Fnatic, so Fnatic already, always had the chance to see, okay, are you out of position? Can we get a potential engage with our Rengar? And they've been using it so well. I mean, full credit to Fnatic for how they've been using that information. But also H2K just honestly slacking a little bit on, on denying the vision. Look again for them. No pinks until now, where Ryu picks one up. Only one upgraded. Sweeper as well, to seem to have not been able to take full control. Deficio, you're re rewriting the League of Legends rulebook because I thought rule one was never chase a singed. But we'll go with pinks. You can see Daylor and Gambit enjoying the game as Fnatic are now 4,000 gold ahead. They are the ones in control as we are about to hit 30 minutes. And look at the gold graph. What a story that tells. One team fight ace. A second team fight than Baron. And Fnatic are where many expected them to be. It looked so, so bad for Fnatic. Didn't get to use the mid game spike at all. Never got the chance to group up because H2K was so strong. They could always just try and fight against them. They had the split pushing threat of Odo on there. And then these picks start happening, these team fights in favor of Fnatic in their own jungle as well because. They could just trade the wards with H2K. They used it. Now we're sitting here and we get to see this poke composition start shining. Now they're back where they want to be. As a poke combo, if you fall behind, it tends to just snowball horribly one way because you cannot really defend yourself. You cannot set up sieges. Now they can. Kasing is going to flash forward though. Taunt forward. Same thing. Do you see the Valkyrie away from Reckless? He's trying to be zoned out. Yellow Star's on the front line. Huni's overheating, so there's no equalizer, but they've killed Kasing. There's the Chaos Storm as the gravity field stuns up a few members of Fnatic. Fnatic are grouped. Reckless is chunked low. Not low enough. Febivan continues to throw out those shock blasts. Despite the lead that Oduwamne got, despite the early items, he's just not dealing enough damage. And he's not, he's not playing the map with the advantage he had. It feels like H2K 
continuing to try to play the invade team fight game, right? And I mean, it hasn't worked. It's not about the damage for the Omno, obviously. He is the tank on the team together with Lulex, mm. but you're right. He's not been playing the map. He's not been able to set up the switch which he wanted with this frozen mallet built as well for himself. But uh, Rainover, I mean, criticized him before with his uh, ring up, but he's been such a big part of these picks lately for, for Fnatic. Four dragons though for H2K. They are behind in gold now, 5k, but they got four dragons to zero. Next one is going to be the big jackpot. Can Rainover and the rest of Fnatic continue finding these picks? Because as we just said here, Poor start, he was shut down early on this Rengar, but he's really redeemed himself. Whenever Fnatic have won a fight, it's often been with Rainover jumping in and starting everything. Fnatic have a lead in gold, a lead in towers, marginal. They are down four dragons. With Baron coming up in a minute, you can already see the priority from teams looking to clear the vision out. Looking to gain vision control. And unless H2K play this one correctly, they may be losing a battle. Tony has to go back and clear out this bot lane wave. H2K build up a pretty big one that was slow pushing in, so just recall for it. Has teleport ready. Odarman does not. So set up a slow push now if you are a fanatic. And then you can start grouping around Baron and land this Poké. You don't want to start the Baron necessarily. You want to have H2K trying to move in and like place a few wards himself, trying to spot you if you are spot if you are doing the Baron, and then you start landing this poke out of vision against H2K where they have no real way of dodging it, and they're just stuck always trying to face check into Fnatic where they have full vision of them, while Huni can be a split pushing threat. So we might see H2K just try and force Baron itself to start the Baron to try and force Huni to teleport away. But that's also super risky because then we have all this AoE damage coming from Fnatic in terms of pokes. So, very, very tough situation for H2K where there's no real great play to make. Look at the poke coming out from Fnatic. H2K managed to bully their way into the river, clear out some wards, get a pink down in that death bush in the middle of the river. Kasing's got one more pink in his inventory and his flash available. Shadow Dash flash engage available for H2K. What they do, Ryu just gets chunked down. Look at Kasing on the front line. Don't want to be there if you don't have your mid lane available for a team fight. Remember, there's cleanse for Fedrovan, so he should not be the target for the Shen Torn. Instead, you want Reckless or maybe Huni to take him down before the Hourglass. But Fnatic now, because they've all been landing so much hope, they know HK have been forced to back away and they just start the Baron now. Kaling comes up from Kion and he's a little split from his team. H2K in position. Baron number two secured. Equalizer comes out and Odawan is down already. Lulex is looking for Feathervin, but he's not going to find him. Rainover leaps in. We see a flash for flash. Yellowstar chasing Kasing. Three members of H2K are down. Fnatic have a Baron. Yellowstar setting up yet another kill for Fnatic. And Rainover, he's bounced back from a horrid start. And Fnatic will have an uncontested inhibitor turret for at least 25 seconds. And just great play all around from Fnatic and setting up this Baron. How they're just dancing around it. They wait for H2K to move close, then they land the poke. And once H2K is forced back to their own base, well, then you just start rushing in this Baron here for Fnatic. I mean, if you can't even beat them when you get two kills at level one, who's going to stop Fnatic? Two kills at level one for H2K. 7-1 later on in the game, and yet here we are. If Fnatic closed it out, that drop down just told us they will tie the longest standing LCS winning record in the regular season. With two lanes of super minions, with Baron empowered minions, and with a whole lot of momentum and tempo, Fnatic are showing there is very little they cannot do. And H2K have been getting so little gold. The last many, many, many minutes. They've been getting the dragon, sure. But you need to get number five to really benefit from these stats. If you look at it, like, we mentioned Frozen Mallet, Randon, and Zoman from NR. I feel like that's 10 minutes ago. Ever since, there's not been a complete item. I mean, sure. He's gotten a chain west, and that's been about it. Odan has been completely shut down in terms of gold, in terms of income for himself. Not even close, really compared to what Fnatic's been picking up 
Fibberman has the fantastic Infinity Edge. Pop your W on this Jace, turn into hammer form and just <laughs> destroy people. Let's see how many shock blasts Febervin can land. <laughs> Kasung's actually going to dash into that one. Odo Wamne is chunked a little bit. He's got that elixir of iron. Minion wave is being cleared out efficiently, but look at the supers. They're not in the base yet. 25% of Baron left for Fnatic, and they poked Kasing down. So if his stand tonight it comes in, it will be low. Culling used to try and clear this wave. Reckless is getting a few auto attacks down. Yarnin is going to dash forward aggressively. Oduwamne is going to go Mega Nar. Does not have Flash available. Will get Hyper in a moment. He's going to try stun up Huni. We see Rainover. He's splitting up HDK's focus. And Oduwamne is down. Lulex follows quickly thereafter. And Fnatic find a third. That's a double kill for Reckless as Huni goes for another. Four members of H2K are down. The Supers are into the base. In the European LCS, every team fights one another, but it's Fnatic that end up winning. 13 and 0. They equal the longest winning streak in LCS history. If there's any team that is more honest about playing poorly in wins, I don't know it. Because Fnatic talk about some of their victories yeah. as if they were losses. And you can see the relief on everybody's faces. I'm going to translate what uh, Yellow Star's two fingers means. We've been down twice. Giants and H2K. I think, I think it's the two rules. You know, the pink walls against red guard, pink walls against teams. I think that's what he's saying. You're trying to rewrite rule books. You're not allowed to rewrite, Deficio. Well, the thing is, for Fnatic, uh, some people are talking about how it could be healthy for them as a team to maybe lose a game, see if there were some mistakes. This is about as close as they, as they might get. So there's a lot of things in the early game for Fnatic to go back and look and say, okay, what went wrong? Why did we fall behind? What could we change? And then you just gotta give them so much credit for coming back in the game. How they managed to punish H2K. And obviously H2K were, were somewhat built for, for split pushing with their frozen mallet. So Odo Amni never really had much of an impact in these big late game team fights. That was a problem for them. Because obviously we mentioned earlier how Yannin was not going to be the big carry in this one. He was playing the Lucian, he was supposed to be safe. And he never really got to do anything. No. Happy to see some smiles in the face of H2K. Again, H2K show they are a force to be reckoned with. They responded well early. They played the laning phase effectively in head-to-head -head lanes. But unfortunately, a few mistakes in the jungle, or a few mispositions, I think that's a better word, because Fnatic forced the team fights. Fnatic forced the, the kills. Right. I think it was just uh, the overall map play from H2K that was a problem. Um, again, the lack of pink wards, not denying vision away from it, and then finding yourself split up in situations where you have to respect the potential engage coming. Like we had this team fight near the Baron where Ryu was on one side, Yana was on the other side, and none of them really managed to do anything, and that's where it started going really wrong. For, for H2K, so just overall, some mistakes as a team, and we know Fnatic will punish you for it. And once again, Febivin with a phenomenal performance. 5-0-5 on that, Jace. Once we got to the mid-game, shock blast after shock blast. Yeah. There was a couple of fans in the audience there, Huni is love, Huni is life. He ended 5-2-9. and 18-0 the dream. It's still possible if Fnatic can take down Origin tomorrow. If they can. That is, to set, week. that is to set game of the week. Game of the week. That is to set game the new the record. Week. We'll head down to Pulse on stage for a little bit more insight into Fnatic's 13th straight win. Thank you, Quickshot. I'm joined here by Reckless from Fnatic after their win. And it was very hard fought. And I do want to ask you about the early game because you lost a lot of kills and were down a lot of gold very early on. Um, yeah, basically we had a level one strategy going into into the game, uh, judging of their previous level one strategies. So we just tried to like form a strategy uh, towards what they were usually doing, uh, and then they ended up doing another strategy that, like in the, in 12 games, they did a specific thing, and then in this game they changed up completely. So we got kind of caught off guard with that, and we ended up giving two kills level one, and then they, they had like a huge advantage in pretty much every lane uh, to begin with. And aside of that, we had weak matchups on pretty much every lane as well. So it was like really hard 
to keep the team solid in early game uh, without getting two snowball down. So sometimes, you know, when you win these games, it's like kind of hard to tell if if you win because you're the better team and that's why you come back into the game and make make these like clutch decisions where you get towers for nothing. Um, or if they are just not good enough to, to keep us off those towers or the way the ways we can come back into the game. So it's kind of hard to tell, but I still feel like we kind of did what we could with the champions we had and the situation we were in. So I'm pretty happy about that win. Well, I did want to ask you about how you just identify those opportunities, because yes, you were down in the early game, but how do you say, oh, this is the team fight that we need right now? Well, basically, all the champions in the game have, have their own power spikes, right? So if, if I'm strong at a certain moment, uh, maybe the enemy is also strong, strong, but he has more form than me, so he's obviously stronger. But in this type of scenario, for example, for my role, I'm strong at like level 11 with Corky. So we tried to work around that, even though Lucian was like two or three levels up on me. Uh, and then also just like very, very solid shot calling from Yellow Star, uh, I think kept us in the game. And uh, he was making sure we made the right decisions at the right times instead of just going for a fight that we were not going to win and then ending up giving even more kills than we were already giving. And then that would make, make the game impossible to come back in. So definitely, I think Yellow Star shot calling like kept us in the game. Uh, and allowed us to take these towers for free and eventually come back enough so we could win a team fight and then turn that into a burn. Yeah, well, it was very impressive. This is your second win now over S uh, H2K. But moving forwards tomorrow, you're up against Origin. Do you think they're going to be a stronger or weaker opponent than H2K today? Um, I've always thought H2K is uh, a tad higher uh, than Origin. But at the same time, I don't think either team is a bad team in any sense. So. Definitely, I think tomorrow will be as tough as, as today. Uh, but at the same time, I feel like H2K had a very sol solid plan going into the game. So maybe we have to expect the same from Origin. Or maybe they just go with what they standardly, standard, uh, their standard style. But we'll see. We'll see. We will, we'll just make sure not to die twice level one. And then <laughs> maybe we can have an even game. Yeah, well, we will see indeed, Reckless. Thank you very much for joining me. We're going to throw it over to the analyst desk to break down that crazy game. Thank you so much. Uh, well, first I got to ask Ducky, of course, about what Reckless just said. H2K a little bit better than OG. Tomorrow the matchup. What are your thoughts? Uh, well, it's his per it's his opinion. So uh, <laughs> I, th I think we're a tad higher than H2K right now. But this is mainly because I think that H2K is slumping a little bit. And I think it also showed both in the draft and in the in-game decision making. I just hope that we can be a little bit more uh, solid with our strategy tomorrow, and I think we will give Fnatic tomorrow a harder match. Well, as you say, the draft from H2K in this one, let's get the, the team comp graphic up on the screen, because you guys, if I could have recorded it, you guys were just quite disappointed in <laughs> H2K's draft. That's understating. Uh, let's, let's start off with the bans, because uh, sort of like the, the, the plan from H2K here is uh, target Rainover. Rainover, if you look at the, uh, the champions he played in the jungle so far, were mainly on the Gragas and the Rek'Sai side, uh, and the Olaf side. So if you ban the Rek'Sai and the Olaf, and you first rotate the Gragas, you force Rainover on something new. Uh, I hope that H2K knew it was the Rengar, because it was something that was very visible from Rainover's solo queue accounts. And yeah, they pretty much wanted to push Rainover uh, out of his comfort zone and onto a non-tier jungle while getting the Gragas. So that part of the strategy was actually really solid. But then it gets wacky. Oh, let me start where it gets wacky, right? Like, in the second rotation, they just pick a Gnar and a Shen. And it makes very little sense because it's not contested picks. It's not picks that are going to disappear from your hand simply because the enemy team has revealed the Rumble already. While in reality, the pick that was contested was the Jace. I think we talked about the Jace for a straight five minutes about how it was contested. And it was just shocking that it just passed away through the back ban and pick. Yeah. Uh, it starts off with, like, first up, we were thinking that Jace might be a first rotation from Fnatic. And then in the second rotation, H2K had the opportunity to go Alistair Jace, and they would have set up for a, such a good team comp. And then they end up also giving uh, away the Jace when Fnatic already has the Corky and the Rumble in the first rotation, which somewhat uh, hints towards this uh, poke-style comp. And they also didn't pick Engage. They, they just had no Engage. It was a Shanton and a Gragas, completely unreliable. And you have to know this is coming, like Fabian is infamous for his chase. Mm. Yeah, so you guys were ready to throw in the towel for H2K when the game started, let's be honest here. And then this happens, let's pull it up on the screen. Reckless talked about it, we scouted H2K, we know what they're going to do and they mixed it up. We have it fast forwarded here, because up until now everything's fine. Uh, two things I want to pay attention to is the Jace in the mid lane who's not moving one bit, so there's definitely no support uh, that he could, for example, walk over the Wraith brush in the team and then Rainover completely, I don't know what he... Rainover commits Sudoku. That's basically it. Like, 
No, that, that is a, such a solo queue move, and I, I, I bet he just bit his tongue after he did that. Making a number puzzle there and end up giving two kills to Nar. So much like uh, when Fnatic shut down Oduwamni in their last meeting, they, sh they said, now you get a head start from us, but we're going to shut you down after. Let's get the second replay up on the screen. At Baron Ducky, you had a lot to say about Fnatic's Baron control, but is this Fnatic's call around Baron, or is this H2K's mistake? There's two main things that's happening here, which is Lulex is completely split from the team. Gnar has to TP where Rumble is already there, and Lucian on the top side is doing nothing. Who needed an absolutely amazing Rumble ult from max distance over the wall? It was just, it completely won the team fight alone. And after that, I feel like, I don't know, Fnatic's communication, their shot calling, their, everything was just on point, and H2K was too split. It was unclear what they were doing, and it really cost them the game here. I would have to say that it really showed the strategical flaw of uh, uh, H2K's ban and pick right here, simply because they had a situation where they just had to push out bottom, let Gnar create some pressure before they venture into the enemy jungle. And they ventured into the enemy jungle, forced a TP off of Gnar, and it kind of uh, groups them up. Because in a group situation, they will lose. In the laning phases alone, they, w they were stronger, and that's how they should have played it out. Yeah, but they didn't, and Fnatic still undefeated here. Well, there's still more LCS coming your way today as SK Gaming goes up against Gambit to try and keep their playoff hopes alive. We'll meet you back here right after this. Uh, Alista and Rengar will be good here. Okay, I take Rengar. Okay. Oh, no! Shut up, your Rengar is sick. Go! Hooney will be dropping, but not before he puts the Equalizer out. Raynov has leaped back in with Thrill of the Hunt. Oh, uh, Victor is dead, Victor is dead. Gnar? Gnar? Yeah. Gnar, can we? Yeah, yeah we, we can. 3 versus 4, 3 versus 4, 3 versus 4, 3 versus 4. Gnar? Shen, Shen, Shen. Shen. Nice! nice! Shen, Got Shen. Kalings coming over from the side. Red Team Baron! Fnatic get Baron! There's two more kills for Huni. It's a double. Equalizer comes out and Oduwan is down already. Lulex is looking for Feather but he's not going to find him. Rainover leaps in. 13 and 0. They equal the longest winning streak in LCS history.